the Mighty LS engine. It is by far the most important and the most expensive component within your C5. And you're concerned because last summer on more than one occasion, you saw your coolant temperatures go above 230 degrees. And since most of you clicked on this to find out specifically how to lower your engine temperatures, we'll start the video by going through six ways you can effectively drop your coolant temps. Then for those of you who aren't quite sure if this is something you really need to mess with, we'll discuss if lowering your coolant temps is really necessary. We'll go through the pros and the cons and a whole lot more next. Toys for life. By far the best and the cheapest way to lower your C5's coolant temps is to make sure your condenser radiator assembly is clean. If they're not clean, then none of the other solutions I have to offer are going to help. Our C5s are bottom feeders and they take in all of their cooling air just inches off the surface of the road. And of course, all of that air gets stuffed in right there. Because of this, the condenser, which sits right in front of the radiator, tends to get blocked and plugged with things like paper bags, bugs, dirt, debris, and all sorts of things. So if yours hasn't been cleaned in a while, be sure to check out the video in your upper right hand corner right after this one so you can see exactly how to do it. Now that you've gone ahead and either confirmed or cleaned your C5's condenser radiator assembly, the easiest modification by far to help keep those coolant temperatures between 200 and 210 degrees is to have a local tuner manipulate your program and that'll tell your fan one and fan two to come on a little bit earlier. Behind the scenes, your local tuner will either have to buy a license from HP Tuners for your specific C5 for about a hundred bucks, or if they do a ton of work on C5 Corvettes, they may have purchased a blanket license which allows them to work on all C5s, and that brings their cost down per vehicle. Changing the settings for when your C5's coolant fans come on is basically a three-step process that takes about a half an hour, depending on how much time you spend chatting with the tuner. Step number one is where he'll hook up his laptop to your C5 through the diagnostic port, and then he'll go ahead and download a copy of your C5's tune to his laptop. The next step is for the tuner to go ahead and access the part of the tune within HP Tuner's editor that controls the fan on and off temperatures. And as you can see, it's really just as simple as changing these on and off temperatures. Once the tuner has everything where he wants it, he'll go ahead and save a copy of your tune to his laptop. After that, it's simply just a matter of the tuner reconnecting his laptop to your C5 and uploading the new tune to your C5's computer or PCM, and you're done. Now, just to be clear, this really is a simple tune adjustment, and the cost for something like this should be somewhere in the neighborhood of $250. If you happen to live in Minnesota, the Twin Cities area, and it's something that you'd like done to your C5, hit me up on the email address below, and maybe we can work something out. The next method of lowering your C5's coolant temps would be to use either the Diablo Sport Predator 2 or the Diablo Intune i3, which are handheld programmers, and they're similar in size to this Autel scanner that I've got laying around. These products are sold by Holly, and they simply plug into that same diagnostic port that your local tuner would use, but the benefit here is, is that you can change and tweak your fan settings pretty much anytime you want. For instance, maybe you want to start by lowering your fan temps just a little bit for daily driving, you can do that. Or if you're going to head out to the track this weekend or race your buddy, you can lower the fan temps a little bit more. And if for any reason you decide you want to change the fan settings back to stock, you can do that too. Now these handheld offerings can do quite a bit more than just simply change your cooling fan on and off temps. Depending on which model you get, the Diablo Sport Predator 2 or the Intune i3, you can do things like data log, you can read and clear diagnostic trouble codes or check engine lights. There are some can tunes in the programmer that you can install to optimize your performance for higher octane fuels. If you've got an automatic transmission, I do believe you can change your shift points a little bit and I think you can also increase your maximum RPM limiter. Now admittedly, I am not super knowledgeable about the Predator Sport 2 or the Intune i3, mainly because I've been using HP tuners for the last decade, which is a much more expensive and involved software product to learn. So if I missed any of the key benefits of these products, be sure to leave it in the comments below, and if it's good enough, I'll be sure to pin it so everybody can see it. 
Now the only downside to the Predator 2 and the Intune i3 is that they do come in at a little over $400, but when you take into account the fact that you can change your fan settings pretty much anytime you want, you can data log, you can read and clear trouble codes, you can change your automatic transmission shift points, your maximum RPM, there's can tunes that you can install to take advantage of 91 and I believe 93 octane fuel and a few other things that you can tweak. I'd say it's a pretty good deal. So if you're interested in either one of these products, be sure to check them out in the description below. Next up is a clever little product from Sac City Corvette. It's known as their Cool It Radiator Fan Controller, and it's been around for quite a while. The Cool It device allows you to turn on the high-speed passenger side fan anytime you want from the C5's driver's seat. They offer two different kits, with the main difference being how you control the system. Kit number one uses a remote control, very similar to the one you already likely have. Now here is the little fob. We're gonna push the on button, and there you go. You can hear the fan running. And kit number two includes a mechanical switch and an LED indicator light that you have to find a home for inside your C5, which requires a tiny bit, and I mean a tiny bit, of interior wiring in your C5, so don't let that scare you away. Now, like I said before, this kit is not new. It's been around for several years, and I think it's earned its place in the C5 marketplace. Now, based upon my review of the instructions, and I've watched a couple of videos on how to install it, I would say it's definitely something your average C5 Corvette enthusiast could easily handle in just an hour or so. If you're unsure as to whether or not you are up to the task, don't worry, I'll be sure to include a link to one of the better videos in the description below so you can see exactly what's involved. Now as far as which kit to get, if it's up to me, I'm going with the hardwired switch and LED light because I think it offers a cleaner look and I'm not really excited about having to keep track of another remote control and maybe the battery's going dead after a couple of years. Ultimately that choice is yours and if you really, really don't want to do any wiring inside your C5's cabin, the remote control might be your best option. The best part is both kits are priced the same at just under $130, making this the most cost-effective way to help keep your C5 temps under control this summer. Next up is the most expensive and extreme method we'll talk about today to lower your coolant temperatures. Let's talk about upgrading your radiator. The stock C5 radiator is cheap, it's mass produced, and it only uses one row of cooling tubes, and of course they're heat dissipating fins. But despite this lack of impressive features, it works surprisingly well for the majority of C5 owners. In fact, let me be crystal clear, even though my C5 is supercharged, living here in the upper Midwest portion of the United States, the stock C5 radiator has been 100% adequate for everything that I do. Now that having been said, it rarely gets above 95 degrees here. Now if for some reason I happen to move to the southwest part of the United States, an aftermarket radiator would absolutely be on my shopping list. Because aftermarket radiators, even though they're the same general width and height as stock, they generally use two rows of cooling tubes which effectively double the surface area and greatly enhance their ability to transfer heat. A second benefit to these aftermarket two-row radiators is that they hold more coolant, which also helps, and the quality ones have the tanks that are on each side of the radiator made of aluminum instead of the factory plastic composite, plastic composite material. Now the leader in aftermarket radiators for our C5s is, has to be DeWitt's radiators. They're high quality, they include a lifetime warranty, they're assembled in America, and I hear they have great customer service. And of course, higher end quality radiators like DeWitt's for our C5s, they don't come cheap, they come in at around $800. There are some cheaper two row radiators on the market, like this unit from ECP. I'm not really sure where they're made, what their warranty's like, or anything like that. So if an upgraded radiator is in your C5's future, definitely do a little digging, do your research, and see which one is gonna be right for you and your budget. And the final method or product that I have to help you keep those temps down is a product by Hypertech, and it's their programmer. Now, it's gonna be very similar, if not identical, to the products offered by Holly with their Predator and their Intune products, except for the price is about $50 less. As you can see from their product page, it does pretty much have the same offerings, including changing the fan temps, altering the shift points for automatic transmission cars, installing a bit more aggressive tune for higher octane fuel, 
and reading and clearing diagnostic trouble codes. So maybe just keep your eyes open and purchase whichever one you find a better deal on. Now let's move on and talk about one item that did not make the list, and that is the infamous 160 degree thermostat. It's not on the list because it will not help your C5 run cooler in normal driving conditions, period. Now all a thermostat really does is acts like a switch to bypass the coolant in the radiator, and that allows the engine to get up to operating temperature quickly. Now this is always important, but it becomes extremely important when it's cold outside. Take a look at this graph. The black line is a close approximation of your C5 engine idling on an 85 degree day in your driveway with no thermostat installed. The temperature rises in a very non-linear but consistent fashion all the way up to the point where the first fan kicks on. With 187 degree thermostat installed, the coolant temperature rises much more quickly until the point where the thermostat opens and then it plateaus as the coolant in the radiator is warmed up, but ultimately then the line will catch up to that same black progression line as if we had no thermostat installed and the first fan turns on. It's pretty much the exact same situation with 160 degree thermostat installed, except for it plateaus about 25 degrees cooler, but ultimately the coolant temperature line progression will catch up to the line of the other two. So now that we've discussed six effective ways to drop your C5's coolant temperatures, is this something that's really necessary? The answer is no, but here are some reasons why you might want to. Now bear with me for a little bit because I think we're going to need to get into the weeds a little bit to really understand. GM engineers set the thermostat on the C5 to open up at 187 degrees. This is the temperature in which the coolant starts flowing freely through the radiator. And if you were to take a drive on the freeway, say on a 50 degree day for a four hour road trip going 65 miles per hour, around 187 to 192 is what your engine coolant temperature would be at. So I can only assume from this that 190 degrees is about the sweet spot for what GM engineers thought was ideal for your C5's coolant temperature. Now in the real world, this exact scenario is not gonna play out too often because most days that you drive your C5, they're gonna be quite a bit warmer than 50 degrees and a lot of trips are gonna be shorter, perhaps even stop and go on the freeway. So take the very same stock C5 Corvette on a day where it's 95 degrees, Trips are stop and go, and your coolant temperatures are probably gonna hover somewhere around 225 to 235 degrees, because this is the temperature where the stage one fan operation cycles between on and off. This is a whopping 30 to 40 degrees difference from what we just determined was likely ideal. Allowing the coolant temperatures to get to 230, 235 degrees will heat up everything from the intake manifold, the intake track, all the way to the air filter, and this can and absolutely will cost you serious horsepower. This is called heat soak, and if you've owned your C5 for any amount of time, you've likely experienced its negative effects on more than one occasion. The worst heat soak will occur typically on kind of a warmer day when you've been driving your C5 for a little while, and say you pull into an auto zone and your coolant temps at about 230 degrees, and you shut the engine off for about 20 minutes while you go in to pick up some parts. When you get back in your C5 and you leave, it feels pretty darn sluggish, and it is, and you're probably down somewhere around 30 to 35 horsepower. This is heat soak at its finest, and here's what's going on underneath the hood. When you pulled into AutoZone, your coolant temperature was around 230 degrees, and now your car is just sitting there and there's very little, if any, ventilation to your underhood air temperatures. Additionally, since your engine's not running, there's no cold air being drawn in through the air filter, the intake track, and into the manifold, which also helps keep the intake track cool. While it's been sitting there, the engine and the radiator have been radiating their heat into the engine bay, and since there's no ventilation, the underhood temperatures have risen dramatically. The entire intake track when you pulled in was at about 100 degrees or so, and now due to all that radiant heat, it's warmed up to somewhere between 120, 130 degrees or more, and this is the biggest killer of performance. Your engine's intake air temperature sensor senses the new temperature and it has to retard the timing greatly because hot air takes less time to burn. Additionally, hot air is less dense, which means it carries less oxygen, and then you need less fuel, which equals less horsepower. 
Now obviously this is a relatively short term horsepower deficiency and as you drive your C5 down the road it will improve but in the short term it is super annoying and if you had only implemented one of the six methods we talked about to keep your coolant temperatures down the heat soak wouldn't be quite so bad. Now in my mind there is a secondary benefit to keeping those coolant temperatures down in the low to mid 200s and that is the benefit of lower underhood heat which translates in my mind to a less harsh environment for your fuel injectors, your wiring harness, your alternator, your AC compressor, your oil pressure sending unit, and the list goes on and on. And if you keep your C5 for many years like a lot of us do, I think it might pay dividends. Well guys, I hope you now have a lot more information about this subject than you did just a few minutes ago, so the choice is yours. Please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up below, subscribe, leave a comment, and most of all, thanks for watching.